Welcome once again to this session in the writing module of this course in English. In this session and perhaps in the next, we will talk about how to write a good pressy. Go next. Many people say that writing a pressy is the ultimate skill in writing any language. They say that it is also the ultimate test. There is no test, they say, which looks at so many areas of any language in such a limited time. That is why at many tests of proficiency in the English language, writing pressy is a part of the test paper. Even otherwise, with or without the test, writing pressy is an important skill, very important linguistic skill, next perhaps only to speaking, I should say. Please note that s in pressy is not pronounced, the letter s in pressy is not pronounced. It is not precious, that is an incorrect pronunciation to articulate this word as precious. No, that is wrong, that is incorrect. It is actually pressy without the final, you know, without the s you see in a spelling, and it has two syllables. The stress is on the initial syllable. It's a it's a pressy. It's not pressy. Okay. So these little things should be borne in mind that we never pronounce it as precious because it is pressy. And secondly, whenever we pronounce it, we should have correct stresses. It should be spoken as pressy, not as pressy or precious. Okay. Why is this, you know, why is writing pressy the ultimate skill? It is the ultimate skill because at least three departments of the use of language immediately come to your support if you have to write a pressy. What are these? Number one, understand the given passage well, not just get the gist of it even get the nuances of it, you know. What is being said? How is that being said? What is the actual intention of the author of this original text whose pressy we seek to make here? Okay? So, one has to be a good reader, one has to comprehend the passage well, one have to be a good writer, should have good knowledge of grammar and also of words, so that one knows that these words can be used also in another manner. All right? That is why many people say, or that is why pressy writing is said to be a difficult job. That is why it is a difficult job, because you have to be good at reading, you have to be good at speed reading actually, you have to, good to be good at writing, you have to be good at comprehending and in between a few other things. Okay? Let us go. What is a good pressy? How do we define it? Actually, it is not so difficult to define it. A good pressy says all that has been said on any topic and then, you know, 
that has been given in the given passage. So, a good precis should not cut on content, should contain everything that has been said in the original passage. And then in addition, besides saying that, the presi must also say all these things in one third only of the original words. If the original passage had only 99 words, then its presi should not exceed 33 words. That is the rule. What is the rule? The first two rules are namely this, comprehend the passage well. Next, you know, and then write it within one third of the original passage. All else follows. Let us look at all else. Here is the passage from the one attached here. Okay. It was written by a, 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 you know, another professor, somebody called Basil Boorstin as a series of comments upon the media, upon the then government. Okay. You can look up Basil Boorstin, look at the passage. It has 34 words. Its pressy must therefore not exceed 12 words, ideally 11 words. Okay. Next. What has been said in this small paragraph in, so that we can write it in pressy? So, the second rule of pressy writing is, or actually the first rule of pressy writing is, look at the given passage carefully okay, and then make a point wise list of important things that have been said in this passage. If you can do that with justice, without missing anything that is important and without taking anything that is unimportant, okay, this discrimination your captain has to make in the beginning for you, but you have to develop this skill, this knack of identifying a good from not so good, of identifying brief for not so brief, etcetera, etcetera. Okay? Now, look at the pressy we have done. In the sentence, earlier sentence, please come back, look at this sentence. Now, go back. In this sentence, the following points have been made. Number one, Thomas Jefferson wrote the Declaration of Independence. One, two, Declaration of Independence announced the separation of the 13 British colonies in <coughs> North America. The Declaration of Independence also declared the right of the Americans to govern themselves. Now, these three things have been said in 34 words. Pressy of this sentence, let us attempt a pressy. Pressy of this sentence must be done in about, in only about 13 words even that may be more. Actually, it should be done in 12 words. Okay. Look at the passage above. We have, no, please come back. Look at the passage above before this and you know, we have made some points out of them. The points are, Thomas Jefferson wrote the Declaration of Independence. Uh, Declaration of Independence announced the separation of the 13 British colonies in North America, yes it did. And the Declaration of Independence declared the right of the Americans to govern themselves. Okay. Now, how can we put these three things within the given words, within the stipulated words, number of words, that is within about 36, 37 seconds and 
say all that is use, useful, maybe combine these sentences into a cohesive paragraph and a cohesive meaning. Okay. Next. The pressy of that sentence by itself is not difficult. You know, we, we have made a few drafts this morning and we got these, these are the first draft had 19 words more, the second draft had, sorry, not 19. The first draft had 19 words in place of 12 or 13. The next had 17 words in place of 12 or 13. The still next had still next had only 14 words in the, in the draft, but you know it had not reached the ideal where the author wanted to. You know the ideal was that it, it had only 12 words. Look at the results before you. What has it done? It cut down, stripped the paragraph to bare minimum. The final draft says, the 13 British American colonies would henceforth govern themselves, declared Thomas Jefferson. You know, this 12 word sentence does all that we said in a long paragraph above. We will have other chances to look at uh, that paragraph again, but let us see what we have done. What we have done is the following. Okay? How should a pressy be written? In one third of the original. And should it be mindless cutting of words? No. The passage should be rewritten using words as they fit in the new grammatical pattern, in the new garden, in the new anything. Okay? Let us make the pressy of a longer text so that we understand it better. Here is a text from the same essay maybe third paragraph, right? Third paragraph. Let us read it. If you have read it carefully and made points, then you and I can compare our points. For example, I think the following points have been made. Number one, the 13 British American colonies are independent. Once these points have been said, you know, then they should also be rewritten to make a coherent paragraph. In this case, within 51 words, because the original passage has about over a, a, a little over a hundred words, about hundred, sorry, a little over hundred and fifty words, about hundred and fifty six or so. Therefore, according to convention, its pressy should not exceed fifty one words, which is what we are trying to do. Go next. This is what we wrote by way of the first draft, but as you might see, it had 15 words more than permitted for a good pressy, though it invented, you know, a different kind of mechanism to count these words without wasting time. Yet, in the first draft, a, a good, you know, a writer. Uh, came up only with 66 words, okay? not yet what it was aspiring for. Next. This, you know, that was about 15 words more than uh, I required than, than allowed. This seems to be okay in terms of words. Okay, take a look. So, you know, this is how a good press develops, you know. You read, understand, do the first draft, try and do it within the given time, you know, within the given number of words, but you find sometimes that is not possible. In that situation, you know, the first draft can have more words, the second draft can have a little less, but your final draft must be within the stipulated limit, must be as has been desired, as has been suggested. And you will see that as you go on doing the draft, possibly when you begin, you may not do it all in one day. 
maybe one day you read, then next day you sit down and write. So, even if that happens, it is better than using it wrong or knowing nothing. I therefore, suggest that read a lot of these things and occasionally create your own stuff, your own pressy out of them. Next. Finally, a good pressy must not read like an isolated sentence listed next to bullet points. They must be knit together, they must be brought together. You know, as a paragraph centering on one point. If the point changes, the paragraph ought to change. And all that has been said in the original passage must also be said uh, in the pressy. If we have met these demands, namely that it is in one third of the original and that it has said all uh, that should have been said then it is a good pressy. Okay. Of course, you know there are things like uh, uh, how to go about its language, we will talk about that in the coming session. Uh, here is the activity, the entire essay is given in this link please and it is a, it's, it's, I, it's not just a good, it is a great essay you know. It talks about the rights of the dead, just as we concede the rights of the unborn. You must therefore, read this essay. It will not only help you understand, you know the compulsions of mass media better, you can also, uh, you can also understand other things, you know you can understand the world better, technology better and human civilization also better. Please use your time if you have some time to spare to read this kind of philosophical stuff. Next, do another step if, if it is possible for you, you know following the steps we have shown above earlier, make a pressy of the entire essay, okay. try and do it. If you do some of these things frequently, you know your English is also going to get better. Next. Thank you very much and good luck.